Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we are diving deep into the book Spark by John J. Ratey and Eric Hagerman. If you've ever wondered about the science behind the saying, healthy body, healthy mind, then this episode is a must listen for you. In their intriguing work, Spark, Ratey, a professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School, and Hegeman, a former senior editor at Popular Science, make a compelling case for the innumerable benefits of physical activity. With every chapter, you will unearth a wealth of real-life examples and extensive scientific research, revealing how exercise can enhance your learning abilities, stress management, and overall mental health. This book is not just for the fitness enthusiasts among us, but is incredibly relevant to students of medicine, healthcare, or dietary science, and anyone who is curious about the mind-body connection. Spark does exactly what it says. It sparks a conversation about the underestimated power of exercise on our mental well-being. So, if you're looking to maintain a healthy lifestyle that nourishes your body and mind, join us as we delve into the pages of Spark. Prepare to be inspired to tie up those running shoes and embrace the power of physical activity in a new light. Spark, the revolutionary new science of exercise and the brain. Introduction, discover how staying active helps maintain mental acuity. The human story didn't begin with a sedentary lifestyle. Our ancestors were always on the move. They had to be, to avoid predators, search for food, and discover safe havens to call home. Fast forward to the present day, and you'll find that the typical human has adopted a lifestyle that is almost entirely stationary, often confined to a desk, the only notable movement being the occasional tapping of keys or scrolling of screens. Ironically, As our lives have become more sedentary, our brains remain wired for movement. Our brains expect us to move, to act, to stay active because, in its blueprint, we are still the hunters and gatherers of the prehistoric era. In the following sections, we will delve into the reasons why jumping rope might be a healthier choice over a glass of Chardonnay, the unexpected lessons learned from antihistamines, effects on depression, and the connection between physical injuries like a broken hip, and cognitive decline. Part 1. Physical Fitness. A Roadmap to Brain Power. You're probably well acquainted with the idea of exercising to build physical strength. You might hit the gym to develop your muscles or boost your endurance, but have you ever considered that your brain, just like any other organ in your body, can also benefit from regular exercise? Think of your brain as another muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. Whether you're learning a new language or playing a complex board game, each new piece of information strengthens the connections within your brain, preparing it to learn even more. Now, you may be wondering, how exactly does physical exercise contribute to the brain's learning process? Exercise essentially acts as a facilitator for the brain's ability to form new connections, primarily by increasing the levels of crucial neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. These chemicals are key players in the brain's communication network, helping different regions of the brain interact more effectively. But that's not all. Exercise also brings about physical changes in your brain cells. When you work out, your muscles produce proteins known as growth factors. These proteins journey to your brain where they improve the brain cells' connectivity. They also lay the groundwork for the formation of new cells and connections. And as an added bonus, The very neurotransmitters that are elevated during exercise, dopamine and serotonin, enhance your focus and improve your mood and motivation. So with every physical workout, your brain gets a workout too. The link between exercise and cognitive abilities has been substantiated by real-world examples too. At Naperville Central High School, students who were struggling with English literacy were split into two groups. One group was instructed to do vigorous exercises before their reading class. This exercise program, known as Zero Hour PE, led to a 17% improvement in the group's reading comprehension skills. 
compared to a 10.7% improvement in the students who didn't exercise before class. But the advantages of exercise don't stop at enhanced learning. As we move forward, we'll uncover how exercise can also serve as a potent stress reliever. Part two, swap your stress-induced indulgences with a healthy dose of exercise. Picture this, you've embarked on an ambitious home renovation project, but before you know it, your house is in chaos and it feels like there's no end in sight to the turmoil. This was Susan's predicament, a dynamic mother of four, navigating the minefield of home renovation. Her story serves as a powerful example of how overwhelming stress can lead to detrimental health habits. Susan hired a contractor to remodel her kitchen. What started as an exciting project soon turned into a nightmare. The relentless demands of the project, coupled with the disorderly behavior of the contractor and his workers, caused Susan immense stress. To cope, she started drinking wine, a habit that escalated to a point where she was pouring a glass before noon every day. But instead of slipping into a dangerous alcohol addiction, Susan found an alternative way to deal with her stress, exercise. Exercise, in essence, is a form of stress. It pushes our muscles beyond their comfort zone. However, this physical stress can help manage psychological stress and keep it from spiraling out of control. Why so? Essentially, anything that stirs up cellular activity in the brain is termed stress. Thus, lifting weights or going for a run can be as stressful for the body as managing an unruly home renovation. But when kept within reasonable limits, this stress can actually be beneficial. It is when stress becomes unmanageable that it starts wreaking havoc. During exercise, the brain's metabolism produces certain molecules that can cause minor harm to brain cells. But this triggers a protective mechanism that strengthens these cells, making them more resilient to the pressures of everyday life. Upon consulting a psychiatrist, Susan decided to replace her midday glass of wine with a session of jumping rope an activity she enjoyed. The physical exertion helped her remain calm and no longer necessitated the need for alcohol. Now that we've seen how exercise can help handle stress, let's explore how it can be an effective weapon against depression. Part three, exercise, a physical remedy for the blues. Has there ever been a time when you've felt uncharacteristically low for an extended period? If so, you may have been experiencing symptoms of depression. The traditional method of addressing such feelings often involved exploring past experiences or traumas to identify potential root causes. Depression, for a long time, was viewed as a purely psychological issue with no real connection to physical health. However, this perception took a dramatic turn when doctors started noticing a curious link between certain medications and improved moods. In the 1950s, doctors observed that patients taking medication for tuberculosis seemed happier. A similar mood-enhancing effect was noticed with patients on specific allergy medications. This raised an interesting question. If a physical intervention like medication can uplift a person's mood, could a low mood have physical origins? This spurred researchers to dig deeper into the biological underpinnings of depression. Along the way, they discovered a tangible connection between physical exercise and improved mood. We now understand that occasional feelings of sadness or irritability don't equate to depression. But when these feelings persist and refuse to dissipate, they could be signs of a deeper issue. Whether it's a bad day or a bout of clinical depression, exercise has proven to be an effective alleviator of depressive symptoms. Physical exertion produces endorphins, chemicals in the body that are similar to morphine, inducing feelings of euphoria. Bill, one of the author's patients, is an excellent example of this. When Bill turned 50, he was also carrying around 20 extra pounds. To lose weight, he embarked on a diet and jogging regimen. To his surprise, not only did he lose weight, but he also began to feel less irritable and was less hard on himself and others. Even though Bill wasn't clinically depressed, exercise seemed to alleviate his mildly depressive symptoms. 
So let this be a nudge to get you moving. Exercise isn't just for losing weight. It's also a mood enhancer, capable of lifting your spirits and brightening your day. Part 4. Moving your body can be a key to keeping your focus intact. Ever found yourself struggling to wrap your head around a complex philosophy theory or a complicated math problem? This struggle is linked to a specific area of your brain, the reward center. Also known as the nucleus accumbens, this brain region is rich in dopamine neurons. These neurons release dopamine, the feel-good hormone, into the prefrontal cortex, which controls thinking, self-control, and focus. People with attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, face a unique challenge. Their reward centers don't activate as efficiently, leading to difficulties in maintaining attention. This is because their brain forms fewer neural connections with the reward center, making focus less rewarding for them. However, this doesn't mean individuals with ADHD can't concentrate. It just means they might need a bit of assistance. And one way to lend that helping hand is through physical exercise. Consider Sam's story. Sam is a successful 36-year-old venture capitalist, but his journey hasn't been easy. As a youngster, his family labeled him a troublemaker, meeting out frequent punishments. His teachers saw potential in him, considering him bright but needing to try harder, refrain from drug use, and stop challenging authority. However, there were moments when Sam demonstrated remarkable focus. For instance, when his parents threatened to withhold his driving license until his grades improved, he managed to lift his GPA from a paltry 1.5 to an impressive 3.5. One factor that helped Sam develop this focus was regular exercise. In college, he joined a rigorous athletic program, and now he runs several miles a day. This physical activity has helped him stay focused, contributing significantly to his success in the high-stakes world of venture capital. Part 5. Don't let inactivity drain the vitality of your body and mind. Imagine this. It's a beautiful, sunny day, and all you want to do is take a refreshing dip in the pool. But you're stuck inside, wrestling with a daily crossword puzzle, thinking it will help keep your mind agile. But should you really have to forego physical activity for mental agility? When it comes to aging, It's crucial to understand that our bodies and minds are intricately intertwined. Making poor lifestyle choices like leading a sedentary life or smoking can increase your risk of developing degenerative brain conditions. Conversely, adopting healthy habits, especially regular physical exercise, can do wonders for your brain health. Working out with weights, for example, can help you stave off osteoporosis, a condition that makes bones fragile and porous while also stimulating brain cells to form new connections. Likewise, a brisk morning run can boost the health of your blood vessels, including those in your brain. Running can lower blood pressure and prevent clogs in the brain's capillaries, which might be caused by fatty deposits or blood clots. Let's consider the author's mother as an example. She was a vibrant woman, known for her active lifestyle, from walking to church and gardening to shoveling snow. As she aged, she embraced golf and swimming, and her love for walking only grew. Sadly, she broke her hip twice within a short span of time. After the first fall, her months of recovery and inactivity slowed her down significantly. This was noticeable not only in her body, her walk was reduced to a shuffle, but also in her mental activities. She swapped her games of bridge for daytime soap operas. The second fall only worsened her condition. She started to blur reality with the plots of her soap operas, even hallucinating characters from the shows. It was clear that her physical and mental deterioration were both hastened by her periods of forced inactivity. So the next time you're torn between a swim and a crossword puzzle, remember, physical exercise is not just beneficial for your body, but also for your brain. In fact, that refreshing swim might be just as mentally nourishing as that challenging crossword puzzle. Final summary. The central idea of this book. The relationship between the body and mind is not to be underestimated. 
making physical exercise an invaluable tool for maintaining both physical and mental well being. Regular exercise can act as a powerful countermeasure to stress and depression symptoms, decelerate the aging process, and enhance your learning capabilities. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.